Okay. <clears throat> well, for my first, I guess, comeback, do-it-yourself video, I'm going to go over all the tools and material that I use when I do my uh, sukumaki, when I do my handle wrappings. Um, I use some, I guess what you would call traditional items, some are modified traditional items, some are just a cheap way of getting by. Uh, I'll give you different levels of, I guess, cheapness or, you know, ways to cut cost and uh, different products that you can substitute some short tips and tricks that I've learned over the past probably year of doing this. So, to start off, of course you're going to need your, your Edo. Um, you can, you know, there's all three, I guess four main types. There's, you got your, your cotton, you have silk, you have leather, and then if you want to call it a fourth one, you have, which is called like a new buck. It's a, it's like leather, it's animal skin. Um, definitely my suggestion, if you're going to do leather, do not buy cheap imitation leather. It, you know, it sounds good that it only costs, you know, like seven bucks for know 15 or 16 feet to do your handle but you're not going to be happy with it I bought it to check it out to see what else it looked like and it just looks it looks cheap and when you pull it it you can see how it's going to start to tear and I've done a handle wrapping with real leather and it's expensive but it's definitely worth it um, silk is the same way uh, you can buy the imitation silk which a, a lot of a lot of the uh, Sword manufacturers use that. Um, I know Chines, like here's a Chines Suka. They they use cotton, but I know a lot of people use imitation silk. Me personally, I like I like the way cotton feels. Um, for a couple reasons. One, it's nice and soft and pliable. Two it's not as expensive as everything else. Um, you can buy the cotton wrapping pretty cheap. You can get it from China and uh, you can actually get it really cheap from China, from uh, I think Artist Fang and a couple other places on eBay. Which that's where I, I bought a couple of my first rolls there. Just, you know, I was new to it. I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money. I w wanted to make sure if I screwed it up I wasn't blowing a whole bunch of money on it. But even uh, the last one I did was Black Edo from Artist Fang, and it was it actually was really nice. There was no frays in it. There was no like misweaving in it. It pulled really nice and even. So, but if you're gonna if, if you want to go traditional, you know there are places that sell you know Edo from Japan that's cotton. Uh, one of the other nice things about cotton is that if you don't have the color that you want, you can always buy white and then dye it whatever color you want. Like this used to be white, and this is almost like I was doing some testing. This is almost like a dark lavender, like a dark, yeah, like a dark lavender. So I'm going to be using using this as my demonstration piece because it's not the color I want, and I got no other use for it. So you're going to want to pick out what Edo you want. And you got to remember, when it, when you wrap this, it's going to stretch and it's going to get a little bit narrower. Um, I, I always check it to see what it comes out at. And this one comes at about 8 millimeters when you stretch it. It's 10 when you, it's relaxed and 8 when you stretch it. And that's going to come in handy when you uh, get to a couple other steps. Um, if you're going to be rewrapping an existing handle, my suggestion is to take your phone, take a couple pictures of the handle that you're going to rewrap, just so you remember which side to start on. Like that right there is going to be your start point. So then 
the triangles match up to your pins. Um, if you're doing a new handle, it's best just to do a dry run. Don't use any of the hishigame or any kind of pine resin or glues or anything. Just do a quick dry run. It doesn't even have to look, you know, perfect. Just so you can get kind of an idea because you'll find out real quick that it's going to land right on top of that one pin. Uh, most production places, their sukas are drilled after they're wrapped. So that's why you, it's coming in at an angle. It's not much of an angle, but it's slightly, I guess an exaggeration, it's drilled like that. So pay attention to that. I've actually started wrapping a handle and I get down to it and then, ah oh crap, I gotta restart. But this is the one I'm gonna rewrap just as a demonstration. So once you figure out what you're gonna wrap, you're gonna use cotton or silk or whatever. Even the, you know, buying the cheap rayon imitation silk, if you can get it cheap just to practice with, or if that's just what you want, hey, by all means do it, but don't go out and buy some real expensive silk or leather and just go at it, because you might end up wasting about, you know, 80, 90 bucks on Edo. You know. So, okay, besides that, you got your wrap. You got the handle that you want. Some of the other tools that I, I like to use, especially when prepping, I have a blank handle here. This was off of a Ronin Dojo Pro, which I really like their handles because they, they're a little bit better built. It's not hollow down here. They actually cut out for the Same, which is nice. But before you do, I always cover this edge and this edge after the same is on there depending on what type of braid I'm doing or what color if it's a light color I'll use just masking tape if it's a dark color like black or brown I'll use electrical tape and I'll run a strip right down there and right down there what that's going to do is as you're wrapping depending on what technique you go with you can put a dab of glue so as I as I'm wrapping and I'm pulling this I got it pulled tight you know you can add a dab of glue right there pull it tight and then it'll stay but if later on you want to you know the, the handle wrapping gets damaged and you want to take it off you're not trying to peel your Edo off of wood. I mean, you're not gonna be able to use your Edo afterwards anyway, but you don't wanna damage your handle. So it'll just be stuck to the tape. So I, f I found that's actually really handy. So I use, depending on which color Edo, black tape on the sides or masking tape. Uh, after you got that all taped up and you're ready to start wrapping, I always like to have, excuse me, this little tool. I got a bunch of these. They all come with those cleaning kits and they're actually really handy for wrapping Edo. Um, I, I like using this end. Now after I after I wrap you know a, a triangle I'll sit there and I'll you know try and get everything tight and then once everything's tight I'll give it a couple taps just to make sure it's set and everything's in there real nice. So I like to have this on me and that if not I always keep a bunch of old chopsticks around just so I can shape and you know if something gets out of alignment I can squeeze it back in and move it around without really damaging anything because it's bamboo plus they come in handy in a good pinch if you need to replace your pegs um, I like to keep a the exacto knives um, this is just your standard one you can get at any craft store and I always have extra blades these are the blades that I like to use this is a pack of 100 
There's nothing worse than trying to cut something real precision and you're using a dull blade and uh, I actually I took this advice from Adam Savage from Mythbusters you know these are very inexpensive but if you wrap this if I'm wrapping this whole thing and I'm coming down to my end knots and my tucks and I have to clip off the remaining Edo and I'm using a dull blade and I'm sawing on it and all of a sudden I slip and I go across and I cut that well I just wasted all of this for what you know a dollar per blade probably not even that I think I paid nineteen dollars for this hunter pack so a couple cents per blade it's not even worth it so good sharp knife extra blades like to keep that on hand um, also when I'm wrapping there's a couple techniques you can do is to keep this Edo when you're when you're twisting it right when I go and do a twist you know it doesn't like to stay sometimes it gets a little A little, I, I, I say fluffy. It gets a little, it's a little weak. It's soft. So, one of the tricks that I've, I've used, and I've seen a couple people in Japan actually do this, is they take a pine resin stick. Which, if you don't know what that is, it's just pine sap that's been boiled down to its, get all the impurities on it, out of it, and it's put on a stick. Uh, you can look up how to make these. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. But it kind of gives it a tacky stiff feeling when you when you rub it on it you can see it's already starting to stick so so when I twist it and you don't got to worry about it showing because it's going to be on the underside of it so when I twist it now and I, and I press down on it that's already staying already in its twist so it helps out with keeping nice sharp crisp twists on your on your Edo. If you don't have this, cheap substitute is the old school Elmer's glue, the white sticks. You know, rubbing that on there and then doing doing your wrapping. Uh, I first started off using just wax, and wax works that works great too. You don't get the stickiness like you get with the pine resin, but you get the stiffness of it so that it's just a cheap alternative so I say go with the pine resin if you can so pine resin or golf wax or a candle whatever else you got all right, so one of the other most valuable tools that I use with this is a tiny quick grip or a tiny clamp. If you're not using, if you're not super gluing your edges down, then after each one that you do, you're going to have to come in. Let me see if I can... not going to be pretty. So you got your nice fold and there's nothing worse than going to the next one and if you're not gluing this down because you want to do it, it traditional or you're worried about making mistakes and you got to turn your sword over well then that's all going to unfold. So having a pair of clamp uh, just one clamp and I just put you know light pressure on it then that's not going anywhere I can go to the other side and start start my other wrap now in the in this is probably gonna be a two-part maybe a three maybe I'll do the end knots 
I'm not going to go over the different styles of wrap. There's a lot of different styles. Um, you can look those up. They're all pretty much done the same. So, quick clamp. Having one of them or another type of C clamp or is something easy to clamp that so you got it, you know, another pair of hands. Uh, besides a clamp, small pair of pliers. This, these come more in handy when you're doing the end knot, when you're pulling things through and stuff like that. But these are always good to have, have handy. I always keep them hanging right in front of me on my workbench. So, uh, finally, the, oh, I'm sorry, tweezers. You're gonna need you're gonna need a set of tweezers or a small small pair of pliers when you're gonna be inserting your triangles in. And I'll I'll go over these triangles at the end of the video because there's a couple of tricks to them. So a pair of tweezers. These are my wife's old ones. I don't know if she actually knows that I have them. And one of the final tools is glue. Super glue and contact cement. Super glue, like I said, I'll use that sometimes on the edges to hold it down. Uh, the last sword that I did, or that last uh, set that I did, that Tonto and the Kokatana, I didn't use any glue on. That was all just pine resin and Oh no! Wait, I did use glue on that. Yep, I used it. I used another type of glue. I used crazy glue, but it was in a in a tube, which ended up leaking everywhere. And this one has a, which I really do like. It's got a brush on the end of it, so you can brush it on. So I use that. I use that on the, a lot of my first swords that I did. Uh, just putting little tiny tiny dabs you don't gotta use a whole lot I literally just just touch it and you can see how little is on there that's all I really use so I use that for the Edo in certain certain spots especially on the end knot there's certain areas where you where you kind of need it just to help out Uh, besides that, um, to hold the sword, a lot of people tell us pictures of that painting. That's just pieces of foam that I, or scrap, throw away pieces of foam. A lot of times, my first couple swords, I just had the blade laid out on a towel, and then the handle and the suka was hanging off the edge of my workbench. I don't have one of those fancy setups that you can do just the handle by itself. I don't do this a whole lot so those are the majority of the tools that I use there might be something else I might grab if I get into a pinch but I'll go over that when I discuss I'm gonna go over a video on how to fix certain things on subas or on sukas and how to fix subas those are some of my other tools will come in handy but let's talk about the one thing no one ever wants to do when they're wrapping a handle is these things they are a literal headache and nightmare to even think about doing but I'll tell you it's worth it and once you figure it out you can make a whole lot of them real quick now these are definitely not their traditional made ones these are just a modified version I guess and uh, how I make these is uh, the first what I, what you got to do is you got to measure when it's nice and tight. You need to measure how wide your triangles need to be, and these need to be about 15 mil, 15 or 16, yeah, 16 mil. Each one of these is eight, so eight and eight. 16 and then you measure from right there up to right where it 
it twists over and that's about this lighting is not good for videos didn't plan on doing many videos when I made this workbench that's about once one centimeter or 10 mil so it needs to be 16 by 10 so once you figure out what size you need and I think 16 by 10 is pretty average that's what I did a lot of mine at so here's a the way that I make them uh, you gotta draw all these out literally and what I'll do is I'll draw them all out on a piece of paper so you gotta get a ruler draw all these out and get a pencil so I'd find and we'll start at one line I, need, I know it needs to be 10 mils So that's 10 mils wide. And I know it needs to be 16. 16. 16. So you can see how kind of tedious this is going to be. Now I actually plan on drawing this out in a CAD program so then you can just print these out and use them. The triangles are already be drawn out. All you're, all you're gonna have to do is just take scissors and cut them out. So hopefully I can get to that. I have a 16, eight. Now once you make all of your lines all the way down, and you're gonna wanna connect everything that so then you're going to have a bunch of those all the way down what's nice is that you'll actually get two so just right here I probably get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten probably twenty so that's not bad but I'm going to try and get something printed out that I'm going to put up on my page where you guys can just print it off of a you know eight and a half by or eight and a half by eleven a normal size piece of paper so what I do after that is I'll cut this out, just like a big piece of it, not each individual one, just you know around the square. And then I'll take the back part of a notebook. It's like that thicker or somewhat thicker cardboard. There's it. This right here. That's why I use the contact cement, lay it out, put it on there, let it dry. Now once you're done, you're going to have that piece of paper glued on, on here with all your triangles. Let's see if I can, that's not a triangle is it? You're going to have your paper with all your triangles on there. Now before you go and cut this out, this is a trick that I just learned that I really do like, is on one side of this you're going to spray with clear lacquer. And that's going to be the side that has all of your markings on it. So this side I'm going to spray with clear lacquer, give it a coat, let it dry. Then what you're going to do is you're going to flip it over to the opposite side and spray that with the same color spray paint of what your Edo is. And what that's going to do is when you have these, one side's going to be brown, or actually your one side's going to be white, like this. That's going to be your paper side, and it's going to be have clear lacquer on it, which it's going to make it a little bit stiffer, which that helps out shoving these inside the Edo. And then the other side, 
is going to be the same color as your Edo, and that's the side you're going to want to face up. So if your Edo has slips or is you know, not as tight or you can see through it a little bit, especially you know, right, right in there, if you happen to see a little bit in there, you're not going to see white. You're going to see the same color as this, so you won't even notice it. So that's a uh, something that I learned that was actually pretty cool. And you definitely put these in after or before you do each one of the wraps. This one's a little bit small. These were for the smaller Edo I was using. And you won't be able to see it. It'll be nice and tight. Now on the katana that I did, or the kokatana, I actually, this is pretty thin, I actually doubled up the cardboard. So I took two pieces of cardboard, uh, this uh, notebook backing, glued them together, then I glued the my tracing of all the triangles out so that it was double the thickness, so it gave the handle a little bit thicker of a... The, the Edo twists were a little bit bumped up, which made the grip a lot nicer. So it was a, come on, focus. That's not gonna focus. Anyways, I doubled up the cardboard, which I do suggest doing it unless you can find some thicker cardboard. Don't use packing cardboard because that stuff's hollow in the middle and that'll just compress and uh, about a week after holding your sword all that wrapping is going to be loose because it's, the cardboard just compressed. So now that you, I kind of give you an idea of what you're going to, some of the tools you're going to want and you got your Edo and you got your mind right and your really going to try and do this, it's not that bad. Uh, I talked to a lot of guys on some sword forums and some sword restoration forums and the one thing they all told me is they just said, don't get frustrated. They said, do not get frustrated because then you're going to rush through it and you're going to hate the fi your final product and you're going to wish you weren't rushing around. You know, do four or five twists and put your clamp on it and call it a night come back later um, I think the first one I did took me I think it was about three or four hours altogether and now after kind of knowing what works best for me I can do it in about an hour and a half if I'm not bothered and I'm actually awake So don't get frustrated with it. Definitely, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna give you a flat out suggestion for your first couple ones. Go on eBay, search you know cotton, cotton sukaido, and get it from get it from China for your first couple ones. I think I got one roll. It was like three dollars and like fifty seven cents shipped for free yeah the shipping took a little you know took about two weeks but for three dollars and fifty cents you know my first couple times doing this I I didn't know if I was gonna screw it up and some of the Edo actually is a better quality than I thought so yeah but you know start off getting the stuff from China just to try it out to see if this is something you actually want to do um, I do suggest anyone who likes you know messing around with their own tools or their own weapons I definitely suggest doing it because it is extremely satisfying when you're done there's there's nothing better at the very end especially when I just did that last sword there's nothing better when you finish off that last knot you did the you did this knot and that turned out great and you finish up that and the very last time you're pulling on each side of the Suka Ito and everything just tightens up and everything looks perfect. It's it's a great feeling. So I definitely recommend it.
I definitely, definitely don't get frustrated because you will drive yourself crazy. So what I think I'm going to do is, I think on the next video, I'm going to show this one being disassembled. Uh, give a couple tips on these fitting and maybe a couple tips on how to fit this because you'll see on a lot of um, production katanas you'll see the the wrapping actually goes over on top of this it's not fitted properly you can see how far down that goes that should that should end way down there so that it, this Edo's hanging over this shouldn't do that but I'll show tricks on how to make that fit uh, how to make this fit a little bit better I'll get rid of some gaps and then also how to finish up some of the top areas but this is a we're gonna be doing a chinesse I think this was off a Kaze Kokutana but I like doing chinesse swords. Um, I find their quality not too bad. Uh, they do use real ray skin. Sometimes they're partial sections. Like I can tell right now this one's probably a different piece from here to here. Just because the pattern of the Same just drastically changes like immediately. It goes from nice big round nodules to like real small ones real quick you can see how big those are right there and then all of a sudden it gets real small but their their quality is not not too bad uh, their wrappings are normally pretty good I do like modifying the uh, Ronin Dojo Pros because their handles are their, their, their handles I think are better they pay a little bit closer attention to detail with cutting out for the Same. Their, their handles are actually uh, concave or swooped in. It's not just a straight slab. Uh, it's a little bit you know, wider up on here, then it gets a little bit thinner. Uh, the bottom's not hollow. You'll see on... Do I have any... I think I have one. Let me go grab it. Yeah, here's a here's a chinesse 12 inch handle core you can see you can see the difference how one's got concave if you look at the bottom you see how that's hollow that's just they can use it's production made they're pumped out you know they can toss it on anything you can see how this is just the same size as the handle it's there's no recess to where the caps can fit and if you look on the Ronin Dojo Pro don't mind any of this that was my doing they actually took the time to actually recess this and it's actually flat right here and then rounded up here so it fits the the piece this is all just round up round on both sides so you can production pump them out now yes Ronin dojos pros are production katanas but they just they got a little bit more attention to detail uh, they're both double pegged this one was a bought handle a spare part one that they don't they don't drill the holes you gotta drill the hole in it so we're gonna go over chinesse because I've done more of their swords I know how a lot of their stuff is made and I know how to modify it, tweak some of their designs. So I think we'll start disassembling that that suka, and then we'll start wrapping it. I probably will not do a whole video on me wrapping the whole thing because that'll be boring. I'll probably just do a couple sections and then talk about how the Manuki are placed, and then we get down to the end. I don't know if I'm going to do a video on 
these end knots, I will, if I don't, I'll direct you in a source to where I learned how to do these end knots, and it's an awesome video. That's why I don't even know if I want to make one, because this video is just so good that I really couldn't do better than that. But I'll talk about it, though. So, that's it for tonight. Hopefully, maybe, t maybe tomorrow night, or Monday or Tuesday, I'll start doing the video on wrapping it. So I think besides that, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions or anything else, find me on Facebook. That's where I am most of the time. And if you send me a message or leave a comment on the post on Facebook for this video below, I always try and get back as quick as I can. So that's really about it. I hope you guys are interested in maybe wrapping your own handle. And we'll see you on the next video.